My name is Jeremy Walton, and this is Filters in Fiddle. Let's go. I want to know if you're using filters. You might be, but what kind? I'm not talking diffusion filters either. If you want more info on that, check out my video, The Film Look Using Filters. I discuss specific filters used in films and show a couple real world examples. For this video, I'm talking about something else. I'm talking about color effects filters. To really show you some good examples, I want to cover two films. One you already know from the thumbnail, and that's Top Gun. Top Gun 2 can't come soon enough. You have to keep watching to find out the second film I'll be covering, but both these films use color effects filters to achieve the look they wanted. We'll get more into that. Plus, I want to do some tests as well with these filters. I don't want to just talk about it. Showing you actual test footage is just as important. To start this video off right, I do want to mention the filters I use most of the time are Tiffin filters, which I will be using in this video. I can't always find the exact details on what was used in the films I'll be covering, but Tiffin has been around for a while and from what information I can find, I'm going to assume Tiffin filters were used for the purpose of this discussion. I think the number one response or complaint slash argument when filters are brought up, from what I can tell, is just do it in post. I have my own opinions on that topic, but let's hear from someone who worked at Tiffin and invented some of the most important optical filter effects of the past 30 years that you're probably using. He's also the author of the filter section of the American Cinematographer Manual. Seriously, look this guy up if you don't know who he is, Ira Tiffin. When asked about the importance of filters when shooting, he says, there's a lot you can do in post, but what I would like to put forward is the concept that effects things that you do to create greater emotional content to fix technical problems are things that are best done in camera in original production so that you have the ability to use the real world and its infinite dynamic range as your source material. I don't think I could have said it better. So how does this apply to you? As for post, things have definitely gotten better. Every year, the improvements in software and options we have access to is incredible. In some cases, post can totally be an option or in addition to filters, as you'll see in a bit. Let's say you have a mirrorless camera and shoot in 8-bit. In post, you don't have the latitude to push your grade to the degree you might need to get the look you want. A filter and creating the look in camera can be a good option. Even if you have a cinema camera or a large budget, filters are still being used, as you'll see right now. In 1986, a film I watched way too much was Top Gun, directed by the late Tony Scott. Everybody who has watched that movie knows about the opening scene. The music, the feeling it gives you, and the look. As a kid, it didn't even occur to me they were using a filter. I just thought it was early morning. Now it's more obvious to me, but it's an opening that everyone remembers. And what did they use? Well, if you have the special collector's edition of Top Gun, which I do, with commentary by Tony Scott, he says, I shot it in slow motion with graduated filters, and it was sort of artsy and dark, and again, esoteric. And Paramount saw these dailies when I was out shooting on the aircraft carrier, and they panicked and forbid me to shoot another foot of slow motion footage. Funny story is, this was one of three times Tony Scott was fired. Luckily, he just kept shooting and then got rehired. But at least we know from his words, he was using graduated filters for this scene. He had a look in mind and went for it. So this gave me an idea. Let's go on Tiffin's website and see what filter options we have. I'm going to guess it was something like the Sunset Soft Edge graduated filter. But I'm going to have the density at a three to make sure we see the desired effect. This filter adds a orange and yellow tint to the scene or enhance a hazy or colorless sky. Being a graduated filter, it can be applied without affecting specific areas of your image. The only thing left to do is collab with the Navy and hop on an aircraft carrier. Wouldn't that be awesome if it were true? Unfortunately, I had to work with what I got, and that was Los Angeles. This isn't the exact same setup, but you'll see how these filters work. Here's a shot around downtown and looks pretty basic. Shot and log, throw on a Rec 709 LUT and did basic adjustments like exposure and contrast. I didn't want to make too many adjustments because this is about what the filter can do, not about what you can do in the grade. Now let's see the image when using the filter. There you go, definitely a big difference. Very moody, a distinct look and all done in camera without having to make a ton of adjustments. Let me give you one more example using the sunset filter. A very basic shot outside of the city. Again, very few adjustments. Now take a look at this. With one filter, you have a completely different grade. 
The only difference is I crushed the shadows a bit to show you a more silhouette style like the Top Gun opening. And with the graduated filter, you have some room for adjustments so the gray can fall over the horizon exactly where you want it to. Now let's jump to the second film I wanna talk about, and that's Enemy, directed by Denis Villeneuve, which if you haven't seen it, give it a watch and comment below because I'm sure you're gonna have something to say about it. This film used a very distinct color palette. This wasn't something that came later in post or was a happy accident. A lot of thought went into the process, which we're gonna talk about. When asked about the look of the film, Denis goes on to say, it felt like there was this yellow coming from my mind, coming from pollution. It's something that we wanted to add with visual effects. But as we were shooting in Toronto in the summer, there was so much pollution that we didn't have to add anything. It was like a natural apocalyptic landscape. We did work with specific filters in order to create that feeling. They use filters, and I know certain shots have been achieved in post, but even when I was planning on making a video about filters in film, Top Gun and Enemy popped in my head. Two films using filters that really stood out to me when I watched them. The cinematographer of Enemy, Nicola Bolduc, also shared his thoughts on creating the look for the film. He says, we try to create most of the color in camera. I'm a big filter fan, and for me, the color is so important to get right in camera. You could do a lot of stuff in post-production to enhance the color, but this can sometimes be more difficult because skin tones react unpredictably in post-production. I couldn't find the exact filter or filters used for this look. I have a feeling it was a combination, but let's go back to Tiffin's website so I can show you what I'll be using. This is their tobacco filter, and I'll be using a density of one. Let me show you what it looks like in person. The Tiffin Solid Color Tobacco Filter adds a warm brownish yellow coloration across the entire image and helps to subdue overly bluish casts. The solid color design makes this filter well suited to pairing with other filters for further control over the appearance of imagery. Let's get into some examples. First up is a nice landscape where I focused more on what was happening around the horizon and sky to show you how this filter will change that up. The only thing I did do was add a yellow green into the highlights. Let's see how that turned out. There you go, one filter to achieve a similar look and only having to tweak the image slightly to get similar results. I actually really liked using this filter and it does have that apocalyptic feeling. We can't stop at one example. I have to at least do one more. So let's have a close up look at downtown LA. Looks good, a pretty overcast day, nothing too special. Now we're just going to slap on a filter with some tweaks and see what we got. Again, I added some yellow and green to the highlights to counter some of the brown in the tobacco filter, but we still have that grungy pollution environment by using one single filter. Yes, these examples aren't 100% perfect, but hopefully you get what I'm trying to show you when comparing these films to the filters I'm using. Okay, I know I said I was only gonna cover two films, but I wanna take a look at one more really quick. That movie is Blade Runner 2049, also directed by Denis Villeneuve, who directed Enemy. And this film is a sequel to the original Blade Runner, directed by Ridley Scott, the brother of Tony Scott, who directed Top Gun. I think this will really bring home my point about filters. If you've seen the movie, there is some spectacular visuals and of course visual effects that were done in post. The cinematographer, Roger Deakins, who won an Academy Award for Best Cinematography for this film, talks about creating the look of the environment when Kay finally meets up with Deckard. That orange environment was done in three different ways. The opening part was on stage, and for this I had Tiffin make some specific red filters for in front of the lens, while most of my lighting was tungsten-based space lights. There were some 20 Maxi Brutes gel green to give a feeling of yellow light against the predominantly red filtration. Yes, we all don't have custom filters made, but I think by now you understand what I'm saying. When it comes to color, he also mentions, all of the color scheme was controlled in camera, and this gives it a reality I doubt it would have had if left to post. Now let me mention a few things. There are countless ways you can create a look. In this video, I focused on filters. I love seeing how a film I liked, a certain scene or effect was created. We have access to a lot of information now. Here's what I continuously find when I read articles or interviews with directors or DPs. In pre-production, they know what they want. They have a look in mind and communicate that with their crew. That might be looking at paintings, photos, or other films to convey that idea. Then they go about the work to figure out the best way to get that look. I've heard people say, don't bake a look in camera, so you have more options later. In my opinion, as a filmmaker, especially at this level with multi-million dollar films, you're getting paid to make decisions, to have a vision, the examples I've shown are baking that look in camera because they know what they want. 
I see that being done more than playing it safe. Ultimately, as a filmmaker, the choice is yours. You can use filters, do it all in post, or a combination of both. What's important is having the knowledge, understanding, and reasoning behind why people chose one or the other. I think that can lead to better decisions and becoming a better filmmaker. Well, there you have it, filters in film. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button because there's definitely more in the way. Subscribe so you don't miss out. But until then, comment below if you have any other examples of color effects filters being used. And as for this episode, it's a wrap. <laughs>